Well, I am Joe Wolverton, as you've heard. I am a writer for the New American Magazine, and I am a, most of my time, half my time now is spent traveling around the country giving speeches on the Constitution, and I'm happy to be here in Denver to, I usually say, foment the revolution. I've got pitchforks and torches right outside the door if y'all are interested. As soon as this is over, go get yourself one and march on Washington. Uh, but I want to tell you, y'all are all very uh, educated as far as history and the Constitution. So let me say uh, a couple of things. First, there never was a revolutionary war. There was no revolution. We didn't want to change from one form of government to another. It was a restoration. It was a war for restoration of our liberties, as Brother Norlander said so well. We, we were f free at the beginning, and we wanted to remain so. And King George had other ideas. He had ideas that he could tax us and use that money for his pet projects around the world, very similar to the way we live today. So we, there never was a revolutionary war. There was a war for independence. During that war, there were things called committees of correspondence. Have you all ever heard of those, the committees of correspondence? Committees of correspondence were committees set up around counties, around the 13 colonies, and these people would communicate to each other. They would communicate how the resistance was building in their county, how strong was the commitment to overthrowing, the sh to breaking the shackles that King George had placed on them through taxes. These are called the committees of correspondence. Well, today, now, now mind you, back then, the committees of correspondence were infiltrated. There were loyalist spies who had infiltrated the committees of correspondence. So they pretty much knew what the rebels were talking about. They knew what they were going to do and when they were going to do it. But the fact is, the movement grew so large, there was nothing the spies could do about it. It was t the inertia had grown so big. There's so much strength behind the movement, there was nothing the spies can do about it. We can analogize that to ourselves. We have modern day committees of correspondence. And I just wanted to talk to you about a couple. Here's Twitter. Any of y'all use Twitter? Raise your hand if you use Twitter. All right, if you're on Twitter, that's my Twitter address, at TNA Joe Wolverton. Write that down, follow me. It's one little committee of correspondence we have. Now people say, but Joe, you know the NSA is listening to all of this, reading all of this. Well, I don't have a doubt that they are. I get the special pat down at every airport I go to. So they're watching. But if we can get this movement big enough and powerful enough, it ain't going to matter what they watch and if they know what we're doing, because we'll still be able to do it. So on Twitter, on YouTube, now I host a radio show which is syndicated and about to be syndicated in about a dozen cities. But for right now, you can watch a live stream of that show. If you go to YouTube and you go to that channel on YouTube, KHQN 1480 AM radio, if you go there, every Monday morning, Monday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain, which is 10 a.m. Eastern, and figure it out for y'all who live in Central and Pacific. But 8 a.m. Mountain, 10 a.m. Eastern, you dial up that channel on YouTube, you'll see a live stream of the radio show. We got a camera in there, and this Monday, we're having Senator Mike Lee on, talking about a little Obamacare, talking about a little Second Amendment, which is what I'm here to talk to you about. Now, finally, thenewamerican.com. I hope you all go to that. That's, that's my full-time gig, writing for thenewamerican.com uh, for the magazine and the online presence. Every day there's about, I don't know, I'd say seven, eight fresh articles up there from me and my fellow writers covering the issues of the day. Now, this is what I'm really here to talk about. The United Nations Arms Trade Treaty and how it affects the Second Amendment and how it affects your right protected by the Second Amendment, your right to keep and bear arms. Now, I was sent, well, I was invited by the United Nations and then the John Birch Society sent me to represent our side of the issue at the conference that hammered out the arms trade treaty in New York in March. So for 10 days, I sat there in the belly of the beast, listening to them say how the single biggest obstacle to disarming civilians was the Second Amendment. 
If we get rid of the Second Amendment, the whole world falls in line. And this, they plan on doing, and they will do it. Well, they think they'll do it. So, the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty, people will tell you it's about disarmament, it's about safety. It is not about disarmament. Please remember, the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty is not about disarmament, it's about civilian disarmament. It's about taking guns from you, not taking guns from government. Matter of fact, have any of y'all read the Arms Trade Treaty? Go online, it's, it's there, United Nations, UN.org, slash disarmament. They have a copy. It's about giving governments control over all weapons, from 22s to intercontinental ballistic missiles. Government approved member states are authorized by the Arms Trade Treaty to consolidate control over all weapons. Now, I'm a student of history too, and I know that in the 20th century alone, 300 million people were killed by member states of the United Nations. There weren't a fraction of that killed by psychos with guns. So I think, if we're really interested in peace and security for, for, the, for the globe, we need to outlaw government instead of outlawing guns. <laughs> now, I'm no anarchist there, uh, Harry Reid, Dirty Harry. Don't come after me. I'm no anarchist, but I'm just saying, 300 million people, that's a lot of blood on your hands. So here I was there where the world united to repeal the Second Amendment. They knew, and I'm going to tell you something about the UN. I don't know, have any of y'all ever been to any of their meetings? Boy, when they think that they're by themselves, the things they say will, will straighten your hair. It's, it's bizarre. They admit the things that we only think about. They admit that the Second Amendment is the last and greatest obstacle to civilian disarmament. And they talk about how can we do it. So I was there representing our side of the argument. And I was alone as far as in person now, the NRA and uh, the Gun Owners of America and the Sports Shooting Society, and they sent papers and they sent, you know, to, to be handed out. But I was alone speaking for the Second Amendment. And I speak Spanish. I served a mission for my church to Mexico and I speak Spanish. And so the ambassador of Spain said, would you mind coming? It would be such a novelty to have a white kid speaking Spanish to our Spanish little breakout group. And to have you speak on behalf of the right to keep and bear arms would just be a hoot. So I said, yeah, that'd be great. So I went and it was the Spanish ambassador and uh, the ambassador from Mexico. They co-sponsored this meeting here at the conference for the arms trade treaty back in March. And they, I won't bother telling you what I said, you know what I said, and we'll talk about it a little bit here in a second, but the things they talked about blew my mind. They said, for example, to me, they said, Joe, the Spanish ambassador, the ambassador to the UN from Spain said to me, he said, one of the biggest problems we have, now this is all in Spanish, mind you, I'm translating. He said, one of the big problems we have with complete civilian disarmament is this habit that rednecks, he used the word redneck in English, in America have of reloading their ammunition. He said, have you heard of this? I said, no, please tell me more. <laughs> and he said, well, what these rednecks will do, they'll shoot their gun, they'll collect the cartridges, and reload them to use again. No me digas, I said. You, you kidding me? And he said, but we have a solution. I said, what's your solution, Ambassador? And he said, well, keep this under your hat. So I am. Y'all didn't hear it from me. He said, we are developing with a German company a tiny little chip that will be placed in every round of ammunition after the arms trade treaty is approved. It'll be pushed every round of ammunition manufactured in every member state, which includes the United States. Once that round is fired one time, the cartridge will self-destruct. We've got self-destructing bullets waiting on you. He said, now, I said, well, how will, you, how will you enforce this? He said, well, under the 
United Nations Arms Trade Treaty, all ammunition must be registered and tracked from factory to end user. So, so easy. It's so easy, we'll have them tracked, we'll know right where the bullet is. He uses it once, boom, self-destructing. He's like, now this is a several years away, but we're so excited about it. That's their mentality. They're, they're thinking, because they know, let me tell you something, it's something they admitted in this conference. They don't care if you keep your guns, keep your guns. Because a gun without a bullet is a club, and they got plenty of bullets up in Washington. They got plenty of bullets at the UN. They're not worried about you with your gun. Keep your gun, but we'll take your bullets. That's the real goal. Keep your mind on that. People say, well, Joe, what can I do? I don't know what you can do. Uh, you know, they're not going to tell me how, you know. We've got, for example, Genia Laboratories. You ever heard of Genia Laboratories created by the CIA? Genia, well, it's, it's, it's a division of InQtel, which was created by the CIA. Genia Laboratories developed a laser beam that in one, one trillionth of a second can read the chemical composition of 2,000 square feet. It can do it through drywall. It can do it through many different substances. The tiny little laser that the Department of Homeland Security is going to attach to all their drones that go live next year. Now, you think, what, what, what difference does that make? Well, read the Genia Laboratories technological document on this laser. It is specifically designed to detect trace amounts of gunpowder. Now, it can also fit on the dash of a squad car. You've got all these local police turning into nothing but arms of Homeland Security through the money Homeland Security's doling out. Salt Lake City, the county of Salt Lake doesn't even have a sheriff anymore. They have a private corporation that's in a public-private partnership with the Department of Homeland Security. They'll know if you have ammunition. Now people say, well, what can that laser not read through? Well, I don't know, they're not gonna tell me that. But figure it out, because the day is coming. John Kerry, just this past Wednesday, right? Y'all knew that. Signed, in the name of President Obama and the people of the United States of America, he said. I mean, he signed the arms trade treaty. Now, the big thing, you know, the UN was so excited because as goes the United States, so goes the world as far as these things go. And there he is. That is a moment of treasonous history caught on film and barely a whimper is heard. Barely a whimper, yes sir. Doesn't it have to be ratified? I'm getting to that, oh. I'm getting to that. Yes, it does have to be ratified by the Senate. But you would think that because that's in the Constitution, right? Yeah. You would think that. But of course, there's also a thing in the Second Amendment that says, shall not infringe and that hasn't stopped anybody, right? So, does it have to be ratified by the Senate? Technically, yes. Can the president enforce its terms through the use of executive order? He is already, right? He's already doing that. So on Wednesday, John Kerry signed that treaty. Let's talk about the arms trade treaty for a minute because it's very important because right now, it's, uh, all of its articles are being implemented, planned to be implemented by the federal government. Covers all guns, all ammunition, and all component parts. It was passed originally by the UN General Assembly, which is, has become the de facto legislative branch of the New World Order. Congress is irrelevant. Whenever any president wants to do anything, where does he go for the permission? Well, I want a Security Council resolution before I bomb Syria. I want a Security Council resolution before I bomb Libya. I want a Security Council resolution, et cetera, et cetera. This has become the legislative branch of the New World Order. Now, President Obama, he loves your children. He just wants the children to be safe. That's why he's taking away your guns. He wants the kids to be safe. Right, isn't that what they always say? It's about the safety of the children. Let's talk a little bit about this arms trade treaty. Article two. 
Civilians may not buy, sell, trade, transfer, or own weapons. That's Article 2 of the Arms Trade Treaty. Civilians may not buy, trade, transfer, sell, or own light arms. Okay? How many of y'all in here own a light arm? Raise your hand. Raise them up high. Hold on. Raise them up high. If you own more than one, that's right. You're all safe. All right. Article 3. I know i got to hurry, Frank. I, I feel the, the time upon me. Article 3. Civilians may not buy, sell, trade, transfer, or own ammunition. And, you know, you probably won't want it since it's going to be blowing up on you pretty soon. This... <laughs> Article 4. Civilians may not buy, sell, trade, transfer, or own component parts. Third, third market, you know, aftermarket stuff, third party stuff. You cannot buy, sell, trade, transfer. Now read those words, brothers and sisters. We're not talking about you just can't have them. You cannot buy them. You cannot sell them. You cannot trade them. You cannot transfer them, and you cannot own them. All of that. Now, people say, well, they used to say to me, well, Joe, you've got the large, does anyone know what the largest private market for guns, ammunition, and aftermarket parts is private. What is it? It's KSL Classifieds. Who owns KSL Classifieds? Does anyone know who owns KSL Classifieds? The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints owns KSL Classifieds. Now, go on KSL Classifieds and try to buy, buy a gun today. Get on your computing machines there. Try to buy one. You can't. Shut down, All right? Because you cannot buy, sell, trade. People say, but it's not in effect yet. The heck it isn't. Go try to buy a truckload of ammunition somewhere. A couple years ago, you could have done that. My relatives used to. My uncle would come home from, you know, Walmart with a pickup truck full of ammo. Can you go buy a box of it now? Good luck. Article 5, here we go. This is a good one. All nations must create a national control list of gun owners. All nations, all member nations, of which as of Wednesday we are one, must create a national control list of gun owners. Period. Well, you, you know that's going to happen, right? And besides, I just took y'all's picture, texted it to DHS. And first step. Voluntary surrender enforced by the Department of Homeland Security. This means they'll send you a letter. Dear Mr. Smith, we, you are on our control list of having owned a weapon, having purchased a weapon. You've got to get a background check, right? Because we all know that which should be a right is now a privilege given to us by government, right? So Mr. Smith, you own following weapons that you've purchased, ammunition you've purchased don't lie to us and say you don't because we got the laser that can read your house please take these down to your local DHS fusion center also known as your local police department please take your guns down there and surrender them you got 90 days to comply you got 90 days 90 days pass dear mr. Smith you have not brought your guns and ammunition to our offices we will now need to come to your house and inspect. You've had 90 days. You have not complied in order to fulfill the terms of whatever law, whatever law, whatever law is passed to promulgate the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty. We're coming here to get your guns. Now, there's a problem with this picture. They're going to do this. Don't get, you know, you know they are. What's the problem with it? You're standing there, and this is, what, this is what they count on at the United Nations. This is what President Obama counts on. This is what John Kerry counts on. They count on the fact that when these armed DHS agents show up in their armored personnel carriers with their millions of rounds of ammo, with guns that you're not allowed to buy, and say, you're either going to give me your guns and your ammo, or I'm taking you to federal prison right now for a year. You know what they count on? fact that 90% of us are going to do it. 
are going to give them up. They know that. Because when you're standing at the door, and on one side of the door is your wife and family saying, I need you for support. And the other side is Homeland Security saying, come with me, you've broken the law and bring your guns and you're going to jail. What are you going to choose? They count on you choosing your family over liberty. They do. But now we, if we're our father's children, that's not the choice we make, brothers and sisters. Our fathers chose liberty over everything. For us, on our behalf. They still died. They had their homes burned. They had their children raped. They had British soldiers that would behead rebels in front of the family, cook the body and feed it to the children of that patriot. But they still died. And we can't give up anything, can we? We, we, we regret that we have to give up 30 minutes a day from watching TV to study something that would help us be freer, to write our representatives, to become more educated. These men gave up their, what'd they give up? What's it say? In Declaration of Independence, somebody tell me. And we don't give anything. We just sit back and discuss things. We shake our fist at the heavens, right? Well, they sat there and gave everything for us. Brother Norlander would know something about the doctrine of the two ways, right? There's the two ways eternally. You got to choose. Everything's about a choice. Tragedy is the pretext of tyranny. Of course, they always use this, right? In England, that's how they got where we're going to be here in a few years. England got there because they had that terrible uh, tragedy in a school in Scotland. But the problem with that is handgun violence in England, ten times what it was, or twice what it was ten years ago when the law was passed. Twice what it was, handgun, handgun crime. It's not going to cut down. It's not about safety. It's about political control. Article 16, read this one in week. Article 16 of the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty, of which we are now a part, says, the United Nations will help President Obama with stockpile management and disarmament if he can't get the job done. Read Article 16. If the member state, the legislature of the member state, is unable to handle the stockpile management and disarmament of its citizens, then regional and international bodies will be sent in to assist in the stockpile management and disarmament. Will they come? People say, Joe, you're going to tell me they're going to be blue helmets walking down the street collecting our guns? No, I'm not going to tell you that. Probably won't happen. They don't need to. They don't need to do that. They've got, we've got Homeland Security. We've got the IRS, right? Don't think that this won't be used. Think about the IRS. What did they do with these, these uh, Tea Party groups, right? Refused their tax-free status because of their political leanings. Do you not think after they've got a control lit, think about it, the synergy of all that. You've got Obamacare enforced by the IRS. You've got the IRS making tax decisions based on political leanings. When you've got all this and you've got a control list of gun owners mandated by the Arms Trade Treaty, when all this comes together, yeah, uh, Mr. Smith, I see you need a certain medical procedure, but I also see you own a gun, so for some reason your medical procedure has been denied to you. You don't see that? Come on, you've got to understand this. It's all coming together. It's political control over your life. Brother Norlander said it so well. It's political control over your life. It's all coming together. And this is just one aspect of it. So we got to decide, is it going to be the UN Charter or the Declaration of Independence? The UN Charter says that states have an inherent right of sovereignty. Is that true? No. States don't have any rights. Human beings have rights, as declares the Declaration of Independence. People say, oh, it's a subtle difference. It's not a subtle difference. It's a world change different. It is a complete antipodian idea. States have sovereignty or individuals have sovereignty. Which ha What's the source of your rights? The state or God? Decide. Shall not be infringed, right? 
the Second Amendment protects that right to keep and bear arms, to protect yourself. But all the experts agree, gun control works, all right? If you want to slaughter millions of your own people, keep them enslaved, ask Hitler, Stalin, and Obama. They can all testify to you the same thing. Gun control works. Now, Thomas Jefferson said, the federal government cannot use treaties to bypass the Constitution. So, the treaty power in Article 6, of course, is limited by what? The authority of the United States. If the United States government doesn't have the authority to do something, can't make a treaty giving it the authority to do that, right? The Constitution is the supreme law. Treaties cannot, by very legal definition, contravene the Constitution and still be the law of the land. So we're safe, right? Uh, of course not. Since when will the government be bound by the four corners of the Constitution? Never, right? So although, yes, in very point of fact, theoretically speaking, the arms trade treaty is null, void, and of no legal effect for having contravened the Constitution, big deal. Great. That's just like us when the Homeland Security comes and takes your gun saying, but the Second Amendment says I can keep it. That's great, because we don't care. Treaty power restricted by the Constitution. Please know that. Nullification seems to be the big answer right now. We got to do this. We got to have states, legislators that will stand up and refuse to enforce unconstitutional acts of the federal government, including protecting our right to keep and bear arms. Now, unfortunately, I know someone here is from Missouri. I, I feel bad now that I say shame on the show me state. Though that's, St. Louis is my second hometown, so I, I feel personal shame at this too. The, uh, one, the state Senate fell one, short, one vote short of overriding the governor's veto of a very strongly worded nullification bill that I really was hoping we would pass, but it did not, alas. And Kansas passed a bill, very similar to the Missouri bill, Kansas passed a bill that said, you know, we're not gonna enforce any gun grab within the sovereign borders of Kansas. And Attorney General Holder sent a letter to Governor Brownback of Kansas saying, we will use any means necessary to enforce federal gun control laws. And you know he means it. He means it. You guys ever heard of Sheriff Nick Finch? Sheriff Finch, Sheriff down in Florida. One of his deputies pulled somebody over, noticed he had a gun confiscated the gun. Sheriff brought him back to the jail and Sheriff Nick says, why are you holding this man for his gun? Well, because I caught him and he, he was speeding and he had an outstanding, I don't care. He let the guy go, he said, you go, you come back when you're hearing date and here's your gun. Well, for that service to the constitution, Sheriff Finch was fired by the governor of Florida, the Republican governor of Florida. To this day, Sheriff Finch doesn't have a job and he doesn't have a dime because he dared return a gun to someone who had had it unlawfully seized. And for his trouble, the Republican governor fired him. Where will it end? President Obama has, with the collusion of Congress, erased just about every part of the Bill of Rights while we just sit here and shout at them for doing it. So you know the Sam Adams quote, right? If you love wealth better than liberty, the tranquility of servitude better than the animating contest of freedom, go f home from us in peace. We ask not your counsels or your arms. Crouch down and lick the hands which feed you. May your chains set lightly upon you, and may posterity forget that you are our countrymen. Finally, President George Washington, speaking of the right to keep and bear arms, and this is where I'll end it. A free people ought not only to be armed and disciplined, but they should have sufficient arms and ammunition to maintain a status of independence from any who might attempt to abuse them, which would include their own government. That's the situation we're in today. Our president, has colluded with international globalist bureaucrats 
to infringe upon your God-given right to keep and bear arms. The question now becomes, what will you do about it? Please do not hate this and go home and do nothing. Encourage your state legislators to stand up. Pass bills that nullify, that hold as no void and no legal effect any federal act which violates the Constitution. Write your senator, call your senator, tell him, do not vote to ratify. Because the vote right now stands at 54 against. Only 54 of the senators are against ratifying this treaty. So please get active, get involved, do what you can to protect this right, which is the right that protects all other rights. Thank you.